Hello everyone and welcome back to Simplicity Imagine. So today I'm going to be reviewing the photo printer by the brand Tommy and I actually found this on another YouTuber's channel so I'll just link that video in the description box below. Just to give you a basic overview of what this product actually does, it basically takes photos from your camera roll and then just prints it on the Instax mini film by the brand Fuji. The reason why I bought a printer instead of the actual Fuji camera is because on my camera roll, my photos are already edited and then when I do this little process that I'll show in a little bit, it actually guarantees the results of my photo rather than just waiting and developing and seeing that, oh, I didn't adjust the settings correctly on the camera. The overall price of both the Instax Mini Fuji Film and the photo printer by Tommy cost $44.20. That includes tax and the shipping from Amazon. Okay, so first I'm just going to be unboxing the photo printer. So as you can see, it comes with a little manual just how to set it up and use it. So if you are confused, then you can just always look there. So here's what the product looks like. I'm just going to do a quick 360. Now it's actually bigger than what I thought in the videos, but it's not that bad. So let's begin opening it. We just have to open up these wings very carefully as to not snap them off. As you can see here, there's this white piece that just slides off very carefully. And this is what we call the framer, and I'll show you how to use that in a little bit. And then on the inside, you can see there's a little mirror right here and just the camera, so don't touch that. And then on the back side, is where we put the film. On this, we just pop it out like so. So this is what it looks like. And that is also why we got the film separately. Be very careful. So I'm just going to attempt putting this in the product for the first time on camera. So that's going to be enjoyable. So there's this front side and then the back side. As you can tell, there's this uh, yellow little tape. So you want it pointing to the left when you put it in. And then I think you just close it up. Okay, so we got the hard part out of the way. Now we're just gonna reopen it up. Before we start printing anything, we wanna make sure our framer is set up. So there's gonna be these thin strips of plastic we need to peel off and then this adhesive sticks to the phone screen and only the phone screen and make sure to not touch it a lot with your fingers cause then it'll get oily and dirty and it might not stick anymore. So we wanna prevent that. Next, we want to then set up our phone correctly. So I pulled up a photo already and we wanna make sure that our brightness is all the way up like so. And also make sure that your screen it never times out so you can always fix that in the settings manually. And then we want to set the framer correctly and we always want the bigger side to be on the right side. And then here you can just adjust what you want in your photo. So I think this is pretty good so far. And then we have to do this quick maneuver of just placing it. Right here, the mirror, it reflects exactly what's on the screen to make sure that your screen is not black. Also, before we click the shutter release button, we want to just turn this clockwise to reject the film cover. There we go. So we just want to get rid of that cover because then obviously you can't print anything on there. Okay, cool beans. Now let's just click the picture, make sure it looks good in the mirror before we mess anything up. Okay, so then we're gonna click the shutter release button like this and then we just start turning clockwise. So after it pops out, now we just have to let it fully develop. So 
here's the final result of the fully developed Fuji film. Now you can tell there was a crack in the phone screen, so make sure when you are using this, use a phone that has not been cracked up all the way. And then since this was not a plus size model phone, you can tell that the framer and the screen did not align very well, and that's why there's some darker edges. But overall, I think the aesthetic turned out very nice. It gives a very nostalgic look to it. And you see that there's these little glares. I think that's from the phone. So when I do some more experimenting with this, the photos will turn out a little bit better. But yeah, I think this product is very cool. Considering, especially, that it doesn't require batteries, it doesn't require Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or anything, and it's a very portable thing. I'm just gonna try out some more photos and just show you some better results. So here are the final results. I tried to switch it up a little bit depending on what was actually in the photo, so whether it's a person or just an object, and whether it's in color or black and white. So the first photo, it was more of a test run than anything, and then the second photo, it is an object in color. Now I really like this one because it had a darker background, so it did cover up the mistakes of the blackish sort of outline on the outside of the picture. But then the third one, however, I think I shook it up a little bit too much because it lost some of its detail. And also since it did have a lighter background, you can clearly see the black outline, which is perfectly fine by me, but some people might not enjoy that look. But I think the color photos that I did feature turned out really nice. It's extremely vibrant and saturated. Moving on to the fourth photo, I feature a person in black and white. Now, when I was taking this picture, I turned off all the lights in the room and the only light that was radiating was from the phone. Now, I think it might have made the photos a little bit more clear versus the previous ones. But however, since there is a white background, you can clearly see that black outline on the outskirts of the photo. and. According to all these other photos, that black outline seems to be there all the time. I don't know if it's an alignment adjustment or some other lighting, but we'll figure that out. And you can see there's just a little bit of a glare. The glare is less apparent in this one and some of the other photos that have color in it, which is a good thing. Moving on to the fifth and final photo, we have a person featured in color. And I think this turned out really nice because this is the only photo that I didn't shake. And as you can tell, the detail is very nice and obvious in this photo. The one thing that I don't like about it is there's yet again that black outline. And I think overall with these Polaroid films, you really want a darker background and then the subject to be a little lighter. Also, if you want to print a picture of a person, make sure they don't have a lot of overexposure to the face from a flash from a different camera that was taking the original photo. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please leave it a thumbs up. Comment in the comment section below. And if you guys are wondering what the exact supplies that I used to create these films, I will also link those in the description box below. They will be an Amazon link. So yeah, have a wonderful day.